All right then. So this month we've been basing, um, the theme has been based on a book by Elizabeth Gilbert, Big Magic. Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. <clears throat> so we've been having some deep and spiritual fun with this theme, I think, which is creating a life of big magic. And we have been exploring the attitudes, the approaches, and the habits that are needed to uncover our hidden treasures. This is basically simplified. We all have hidden treasures, so it's based on uncovering those hidden treasures to face our fears, not to keep them going and blocking us, to face our fears and to trust the universe. Those three things alone contribute to a life of happiness, a life that is well lived. All of us lead, all of this leads to our most creative, magical lives that the divine, that God has intended for us to live. Ernest Holmes, in his book, Thoughts Are Things, writes this. You live because life lives in you. You move because there is a universal energy flowing through you. You think because there is an infinite intelligence thinking through you. You exist because the divine spirit has sought to individualize itself in and as you. This is why you are called the temple of the living God. There, there is a divine spark, he writes, at the center of your being. But you need to recognize this, to believe this, and to act upon this belief. That's Holmes. Love the man. Straight up truth. Straight up. And that is what we are exploring this month. To act upon knowing who we truly are. The purity of who we truly are. So far, we have defined creative living as a life that is driven more by curiosity than by fear. And B, a life you bring forth that which brings you joy and fulfillment, which in turn will always bless the world. It blesses us, but it blesses everyone we come in contact contact with. Since there is a unity, there is a oneness, we are all one. Every vibration that we emit is affecting the oneness. That's what one person can do. So let's not underestimate what you know you might say, well I'm just one person. One person is a majority. It, it is, we affect everything through our attitude, through our gratitude, <coughs> and through our state of being. We have said that every one of us, no exceptions to this one, has within us a hidden treasure. That when we uncover, not A, let me rephrase that, we can have many hidden treasures, not just one, that's too limiting, many hidden treasures, that when we uncover them, will bring forth that which brings us joy and fulfillment, which in turn blesses the world. Isn't that what we want to live? Mm. A life of happiness, mm. of peace, of contentment, no matter what is going on around us to throw us off. It's the faith that the universe always supports us. That faith that we develop, that is what keeps us centered, centered. And we have looked at one thing, one very boring thing. So this is the third talk in that series. Mm -hmm that holds us back from discovering these hidden treasures and living a life of joy and fulfillment and blessing the world. world. So what is that? Does anyone know from our talks? Fear. Fear! Mm. Boring. Remember we went through that. Boring, one note, fear. Over and be, it's the same note, looping itself around. And we have embraced the idea of being enchanted by our own inspiration, realizing that ideas are unformed energy floating around with only one desire. Think of all these, these ideas that are floating around. 
They're floating around and they're waiting to be made manifest, but we must be a vibrational match. If we're not a vibrational match, these ideas just float by and they find someone who is. So there are many times in life when the inspiration and those ideas have passed us by because we have not woken up to, to acknowledging that we are truly beautiful beings of the divine, each and every one of us. No exceptions. So I received an email this month that I thought was pretty cool from one of our members, and it was about the talk that I did last week, so I want to read it to you. <clears throat> and this is her choice to be enchanted. She says, my dream is a divine idea born of a divine purpose. Becoming is its purpose. Its purpose is to be made manifest in, through, and as me. And my purpose is to serve this idea 100%, and all the way through to its fruition. I nurture it with my loving and grateful attention, and it responds simultaneously with its becoming and we are both fulfilled. This is a sacred exercise performed at all times in service of the divine. It knows what is called to become, and I know that my work is simply to follow its lead. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. yeah. That is inspiration, to follow that divine guidance. We call it intuition. We know, we talk about, we're talking about in ministry class, to follow in, to follow that, that voice that we know is divinity within us that wants to be expressed and that will only bring good to us. There is nothing but good in the divine nature. That's it. So let's say we are enchanted. Last week we talked about enchantment, which I love that word. Enchanted by inspiration. And idea gives us that. Idea give, these ideas gives us the inspiration. There's one viewpoint that will stop forward movement, and one that completely supports it. So there's one quality that will stop this movement and one that will support it. And that's what we will be exploring today. So the one that will stop forward movement is thinking that we need permission. Think about that thinking that we need permission. Not necessarily a curious thing, but lurking in our subconscious. It's not, ex not necessarily a conscious thing, but it's in our subconscious there is so much going on. As we know, most of our being and our belief system is in our, our subconscious mind. But it's the thought that will stop us, it will block us, and you may not you might not even be aware of this needing of permission. You may think you need permission. Perhaps your parents were terrified to take risks of any form. Maybe your parents were compulsive rule followers. Or maybe they were too busy doing whatever they were being to use their imagination towards creativity. I think very few of us were, you know, had parents that thought about, let me use my imagination mm -hmm. towards creativity. I mean, there are people, and it's wonderful. What a blessing that is. Maybe they were afraid of what the neighbors would think mm -hmm. if they gave you permission to be free, to be curious, to explore, to create. Do we not? Do we not? I see it all the time. Do we not put a hinge, a block, on children's creativity, on their curiosity, especially once they hit our public school system. Stop. All creativity, all imagination, all daydreaming is, is usually, can't say all, because we have quite a number of teachers here. <laughs> and they are spiritual teachers, including no one. They are spiritual teachers, because they are going in the classrooms and they're giving those children permission to be themselves. It's all done subconsciously, which is beautifully. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> 
Now you are long since out of that environment of needing permission. Remember you had to give permission for everything? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kind of good, especially with me. It was kind of good to get permission. But um, <laughs> God knows what I would have been up to. <clears throat> but lingering deep within you is the belief, perhaps, again, unconscious belief, that you need permission and you don't have it. So you don't move forward. This can block the forward movement. Well, let me tell you something. Right now, you don't need it. And if you really think that you do, then I'm giving it to you right now. You have permission. <laughs> to not be permission. And if I had, I had, I'm, and some of you remember my beautiful pink wand that made noise and colors, oh, and yeah. I would have, yeah. yeah, well, my grandson got it. So now I have to, <laughs> I have to get another one. But just make, use your imagination that I have my really cool magic wand because I am waving it over. <laughs> each and every one of you. And I'm saying this, you hereby have permission to be curious, to explore and to create freely with wild abandon, with no end in mind, other than to bring you peace and joy. You have permission to live a joy-filled life. Take a breath on that one. Isn't that great? So we're going to turn that into a personal declaration. So you're going to repeat it after me, okay? And if you want to do the power position, you may. Because <clears throat> this is a, an energetic, <laughs> like, accepting more. I guess we do. All right. I hereby have permission. I hereby have permission. To be curious, to explore, and to create. To be curious, to explore, and to create. Freely and with wild abandon. Freely and with wild abandon. No end in mind. No end in mind. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. All right, and so it is. You just sent a message. You just sent a message to the universe right there. Right there with that declaration. And Elizabeth Gilbert in her book invites us all to, and I quote this. This is what she invites us to do. Possess a fierce sense of personal entitlement, which I hope you learn to cultivate. I know that this word has negative connotations, but let's appropriate it here and put it to good use because you will never be able to create anything out of your life if you don't believe that you are at least entitled to try. She writes this. It's a great book. Creative entitlement doesn't mean acting like a princess or acting as though the world owes you anything whatsoever. No. Creative entitlement simply means believing that you are allowed to be here and that merely by being here, you are allowed to have a voice and a vision all of your own. The poet David White calls this sense of creative entitlement. He calls it this. This is what he calls. This is the, this is her still going. The arrogance of belonging. The arrogance of belonging, and claims that it is an absolutely vital privilege to cultivate it if you wish to interact more vividly with life. Without this arrogance of belonging, you will never be able to take any creative risks whatsoever. Without it, you will never push yourself out of the suffocating insulation of personal safety and into the frontiers of the beautiful and the unexpected. I love the way she writes. So, we're going to do this one more time. Power position. <laughs> I hereby have permission. I hereby have permission. In fact, I am entitled. In fact, I am entitled. To be curious to explore and to create. To be curious to explore and to create. Freely with wild abandon. Freely with wild abandon. With no end in mind. With no end in mind. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. I love it. So Ernest Holmes 
interesting creative mind and success writes this. Always remember this. Life is from within outward and never from without inward. You are the center of power in your own life. It's the truth. You are a powerful creator. And if no one has told you, I am telling you right here, right now, you are a powerful creator. Knowing you have permission, in fact, knowing that you are entitled, you are entitled to be curious, to explore, and to create is a catalyst for bringing forth that joy and fulfillment. And then Gilbert suggests there is a second quality that completely supports us in living and creating life. And we touched upon it a little bit last week without specifically saying it. And that quality, it's one of my, one of my favorites, I got a whole bunch of them I absolutely align with. This one is persistence. Persistence. This is the question I invite you to ask yourself. What would I do next if I didn't think it was impossible? What would I do next if I didn't think it was impossible? Beautiful question. Write that one down. And then persistently pursue whatever the answer is. Don't give up on it. Keep on going. There's a note from the universe. You know I love Mike Dooley and the notes from the universe, and I know a lot of you have now subscribed online to it. Wonderful, um, inspirational messages that come on the computer every day. Well, this is one of them. And he says this, what happens when we engage in persistence? He writes, and, and, and you know, he sends them with your name on it, so you get these like personalized messages. So what if it takes a long time? So what if it's already taken longer than you thought? Mm -hmm. So what if it will still take longer? The day will nonetheless arrive, as it always does, when all your prior efforts, determinations, and persistence will seem a paltry price indeed, as you are lifted irrevocably higher as if by chariots of fire, into realms previously unimagined. And then you'll think to yourself, wow, that was fast. <laughs> and then he signs it off. I can hear the music, now the universe. They're always really cool. They're always just right on target, I think. In Science of Mind, Holmes writes this, there is no secret in this business of demonstrating, the only secret is the persistent ability to use the law and the determination to continue to use it until we prove it. Holmes is so famous for saying, don't believe me. Go out and prove it to yourself if it works or not. So go out and prove it. Use it. See what happens. It's pretty cool. So I have this story about determination. I've, I've used it before, but it's been a couple of years, so <clears throat> maybe you forgot. <laughs> there was once a farmer who owned an old mule, and the mule fell into the farmer's well. The farmer heard the mule braying, or whatever it do is that mules do when they fall into a well. <laughs> And after carefully assessing the situation, the farmer sympathized with the mule, but decided that neither the mule nor the well was worth the trouble of saving. Pretty sad. Yeah. Instead, he called, his, whoops, he called his neighbors together and told them what had happened, and enlisted them to help him hauled dirt to bury the old mule in the well and put him out of his misery. Oh, I'll go with it, go with it, it's gonna get Initially, there's a point to this, the old mule was hysterical. 
But as the farmer and the neighbor continued shoveling and the dirt hit his back, a thought struck him. It suddenly dawned on him that every time a shovel load of dirt landed on his back, he would simply shake it, shake it off and step up. He did this blow after blow. Shake it off and step up. Shake it off and step up. Shake it off and step up. He repeated this to encourage himself. No matter how painful the blows or distressing the situation seemed, the old mule fought panic. He fought it and just kept right on shaking it off and stepping up. And it wasn't long before the old mule, battered and exhausted, stepped triumphantly over the wall of that well. What seemed like it would bury him actually blessed him all because of his persistence and determination. Wow. Is that a good story? Mm -hmm. good. And I, I don't know, maybe that's why they say you could be as stubborn as a mule. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be right in there, doesn't it? Sure. So Gilbert wrote in her book, Big Magic, so you must keep trying. You, you must keep calling out for your own big magic. You must search tirelessly and faithfully, hoping against hope to someday experience that divine collision of creative communion, either for the first time or one more time. Because when it all comes together, it's amazing. When it all comes together, the only thing you can do is bow down in gratitude, as if you have been granted an audience with the divine, because you have. Keep on moving, like I say, one foot in front of the other. It doesn't make any difference how small your steps are. They are going to lead you to a place that you want to be but you got to take the steps. So let's bring this together this morning by taking our permission statements and add to it persistence. Is that persistence? Anyone, mm. anyone else here persistent? By yes. to the point of annoying? Absolutely. <laughs> so I've been told. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's yeah. what we're saying here this morning. Yeah. It's a good thing. You don't give up. So we're going to add <coughs> to the persistent affirmations and applying these words to a hidden treasure you are wanting to call forth or an idea that has landed on you with which you have become enchanted. So see if there's an idea in your mind. There's got to be one that you really want to see happen in your life. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it. Power position. <laughs> <clears throat> Repeat after me. I hereby have permission. I hereby have permission. In fact, I am entitled. In fact, I am entitled. To be curious to explore and to create. To be curious to explore and create. Freely with wild abandon. Freely with wild abandon. With no end in mind. With no end in mind. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. Other than to bring joy and fulfillment. Therefore, I am persistent. Therefore, I am persistent. I move forward, not finished. Well, I move forward to my highest good. To my highest good. Nothing in the world. Nothing in the world. Can take the place. Can take the place. Of persistence and determination. Of persistence and determination. With God's help. With God's help. I now persist into my highest good. I now persist into my highest good. I invite the powerful loving action of God into my life. I invite the powerful loving action of God into my life. Into my life. Into my life. I anticipate the best. I anticipate the best. In every aspect of my life now. In every aspect of my life now. The work of my hands. The work of my hands. And the plans of my life. And the plans of my life. Are moving toward a sure and complete 
perfection. Our moving towards a sure and complete perfection. Miracles now follow. Miracles now follow. And magic. And magic. Big magic. Big magic. Never ceases to manifest. Never ceases to manifest. So it is, and so it is done. And so it is, and so it is done. 